Hey guys, before I get this video started, I want to give a spoiler warning for major plot points in Dragon Ball Super Broly. With that said, if you clicked on this video, you've probably seen the new Broly movie. If you haven't, I suggest you do before continuing. It's an amazing movie and the team at Toei and Toriyama's writing really pulled out all the stops. Today I plan on talking about a few things. The good, the disappointing, and my theories. Now this is my personal bias, but I was beyond happy to see Goku's mother Gine in an animated production. I think she's an amazing addition to the canon, but I'm not going to get into that. I might make a separate video on that topic. I was very happy to see that not once did Broly scream Kakarot and that the old crying baby backstory was removed. The motivations of both Broly and Paragus seemed very justified than compared to the original. Not only that, but Broly himself had actual character development and personality. I was also very happy to see Vegeta had a good amount of time in the spotlight, and it wasn't just a Goku movie. To top it off, the animation was beautiful, and the new style is very refreshing to watch. The transformations were gorgeous and a delight to see. However, I'd like to address something I've heard circulating. In the scene where Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue, his hair turns white and visually looks similar to Ultra Instinct. A lot of people think this means something, but in reality, it's most likely just the movie's artistic flair, or at most, a reference, but I doubt that. The same thing can be seen in Vegeta when he goes Super Saiyan and his hair is momentarily green. It's probably just a studio showing that when hair color changes, it doesn't go from just black to yellow, which makes sense. Not much about this movie was disappointing. I did want to spend a little more time on Planet Vegeta, but that's forgivable given the length of the movie. I was sad we didn't get to see or even get hints at Vegeta's mother. She's never been talked about before and I think she should be added sometime. Speaking of Vegeta, I think he was a little too cruel when fighting Broly as a Super Saiyan God. A good chunk of Super showed us how human Vegeta has become. Mind you, he didn't actually kill Broly, but there was that one scene where Goku told Vegeta to stop. I don't think this undoes his character development from Super, however. It could boil down to him trying to test Broly and push him like he's done to Kaba. Or I'm just wrong and he was just being Vegeta. The only other thing that was disappointing to me was that we didn't actually see Tarbul, we only heard his name. This movie definitely opens the door for more Dragon Ball content in the future. With that said, I've got a few theories. Besides the Saiyans we knew that survived Frieza genocide, there were two other Saiyans we didn't know about until now. What if they didn't die after all this time? Will they be in future Dragon Ball content? It's unlikely, but it definitely would be interesting. Did Broly and Gogeta break into an alternate dimension during their fight? During the scene, we see Gogeta and Broly's attacks collide. And as they do, some cool but strange visual effects show up on the screen, and the two seem to disappear from Earth. Now this wouldn't be the first time someone in Dragon Ball has busted through dimensions with their power. Both Gotenks and Super Buu have done it to escape the room of spirit and time. Now what would be even cooler is if somehow they unintentionally created that pocket dimension. Could Broly become a god? In the movie we see Chi Lai mention how innocent Broly is, and we see that this is demonstrated whenever he's calm and composed. We don't know for a fact if he has a pure heart or not, but this could have been implying that he does. And if he does have a pure heart, this could give us Super Saiyan God or Super Saiyan Blue forms, or even new forms down the road. Could Chi Lai and Broly become a couple? Throughout the movie, Chi Lai has shown to care about Broly and help him whenever possible. This is demonstrated when she crushes Paragus' control device and when she saves Broly's life using the Dragon Balls. To top it off, when Goku pays the three a visit at the end, Chi Lai becomes very protective of Broly and tells Goku to leave and does not trust him. I personally think this would work out well as a future plot point and could even be a catalyst for more Saiyan hybrid children to be born. This next theory is a potential explanation for Broly's canon legendary Super Saiyan form. In the film, we see Broly use a form we've never seen before. It's being called Wrathful Broly and is the channeling of the Great Ape power into his body at the expense of his sanity. Later in the movie, we see Broly attain Super Saiyan after watching his father die. It's my theory that Broly's legendary Super Saiyan form is a combination of the Wrathful form and that of Super Saiyan. This potentially could explain why the form continually increases his power level as he fights, as he does in the Wrathful form. All around, I think this movie was amazing, and I definitely want to see it again. But that's all from me for now. I'll see you guys in future videos.